All right, everybody, welcome to this wonderful episode. I'm so excited to have you all joining me for a very special interview with someone who I have the utmost respect for and someone who is a fellow YouTuber, Mr. Brad Yates. Welcome to this Pave Your Paradise interview. Thank you so much, Mandy. I'm happy to talk to you. Amazing. So for those of you who are maybe not familiar with Brad's amazing channel, uh, it's Tap with Brad on YouTube. Um, he has a lot of different cool things that he is up to in the world of EFT tapping, but also some other cool projects he's involved with. So rather than me telling everyone about your amazing work, I'd love if maybe you want to share a little bit about what you do with others. Yeah, I, I, I'm very blessed to, to get to help people clear away their limiting beliefs and fears that stop them from living their best life possible. And, you know, success is up to the individual. It may be about financial success. It may be physical health. It may just be hap being happier, which to me leads to all the other things. You know, I actually I was just I was just sharing a video the other day that I made some time ago called Seek Ye First to Feel Good. You know, it's, there's mm -hmm. a quote in the Bible about seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added unto you. It's like, well, that's that feeling of being feeling really good in body, mm -hmm. mind and spirit. And when you get to that place of feeling that good and that clean, really good things show up in your life. <laughs> so yeah, so I primarily use, as you said, EFT tapping, because when we try to make changes in our lives, when we try to achieve a better life, whatever that looks like for us, there's a part of us that says, whoa, that's not safe. That's not okay. That's different. That's dangerous. And we have a stress response that, that even unconsciously, before we're even aware of it, distracts us, takes us down another, another path. And then we're just left wondering, huh, I wonder why my life doesn't get better. And we don't even realize we have that stress response and that detour. So using this process of tapping to clear that stuff out so that we can let go of the stress and we can see what we really want and move in that direction. Yeah, it's fascinating. I stumbled upon EFT tapping uh, years ago, not even realizing what it was basically and it was through yoga i found it through yoga where i was doing all these it was a um, an ancient korean type of yoga and basically within the classes the instructor would get us to tap different parts of our body and i didn't really they didn't call it eft tapping you know right. Right. but but in essence it was and i'm very curious because obviously you're an expert at it you know like how did you come across eft tapping to begin with yeah. And as you said, it's, it's been around and there are all kinds of forms of using this, this energy system that we have, you know, tapping is based on acupuncture, which has been around in Chinese medicine for thousands of years. And, but instead of sticking needles in these key points, we're using our fingertips to just stimulate these same points. Mm -hmm. But in ancient medicine, uh, particularly in the East, They've, they've known the energy works that way. And so there have been other different ways of stimulating it. So while EFT, as we know, it has been around for, uh, you know, 30, 40 years, maybe, uh, since Dr. Roger Callahan first started using this tapping. But this, this way of stimulating these points has been used, uh, particularly in Eastern medicine, for thousands of years. I, I came across it because, well, I, I started as an actor. And I had traveled the world doing theater. And then I went to Hollywood to be a movie star. And while I was there, I met a woman, fell in love, got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, you know, I might need a backup career. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, but instead of getting a, a steady job, I became a hypnotherapist. And because I had been fascinated with the power of the mind. And after a couple of years, uh, then when I, I was doing the acting thing and the hypnotherapy thing, and then when our second child was on the way, I realized as much as I love acting, this is really what I'm meant to be doing. This personal yeah. development work was really my calling. And we left Los Angeles and then through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about tapping and EFT. And I went and I took a training with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT. 
and just fell in love with this technique. And little by little, it became my my main technique. And for anyone who's who's watching this and, and has seen me go like this and was like, whoa, whoa, what? You, I mean, you're really tapping on your face? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we were literally tapping on our face. And I know it may sound, sound a little strange. In my time as an actor, one of the things I did was I trained at Ringling Brothers and Bombardin Bay Clown College. So when I learned tapping, it wasn't the strangest thing I'd ever been asked to do. So it was a little bit easier for me to take it on than I know for some people, it might be outside of the uh, what's normal for them. But as I said, it's, it's based on thousands of years of ancient wisdom about how our bodies work. And it's, uh, it's a profound way of reducing stress. We have modern research validating it. There's a growing mm -hmm. body of evidence, uh, chemical studies, fMRI studies, all these things showing in double blind gold standard research that the tapping is very beneficial and very effective for reducing emotional distress and uh, these, these blocks that keep us from feeling good. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing your, your personal uh, path to how you stumbled upon or came into this. Uh, I like to call it healing medicine because honestly, Brad, I mean, there's many reasons why I want to have you particularly on this YouTube video interview, but one of them is your personality. So the acting and all the, like all of that stuff explains like just your personality and you're not, I, I, I don't want to say that there's, I never assume there's a typical anybody, but like just your personality that's woven into your videos. You can really feel like I'm all about energy. You can really feel your, your goodness, your, your positive intentions. You're, you're, you're actually a healer, you know? So you can feel all that when you're watching your videos. And as I, I, um, I mentioned before, like taking part, I, I, I was trying to think before our interview where I even stumbled upon your videos. I can't, quite place whether it was either the algorithm that suggested you or if I had actually searched other people doing EFT um but for whatever reason I manifested your videos and I'm so happy that I did because I do do them regularly for a while I was actually doing you know I have a few favorites because you have so many beautiful ones for different things um and if for those watching again top with brads on YouTube um I'd say a few of my absolute favorites. Well, one of the ones we were talking about before the, just before the interview was I love starting my day with, you know, amazing day. And there's like the fuller length version and then there, bless you, uh, the fuller length version and then the shorter, you know, the quickie version. And it honestly just sets your entire body, mind, spirit up in a few minutes. Literally, that's all it takes. That's just a few minutes to shift your entire energetic state. It's so powerful beyond like even how I can describe it. But I do have a, a question of all the videos you've created because there's so many. Do you have a particularly favorite one? <laughs> Which of my children do I love best? Come on, Andy. That's not <laughs> right? a fair question. Um, I'm really curious. Or yes. maybe another way put would be like, is there one that you you were the most inspired to create maybe from a really personal deep space. Even that's tough. There, uh, someone once said, how do you come up with so many topics? Cause I have over a thousand videos now. Yeah. And I said, well, and be very proud as well. I mean, Brad is almost on his way to 200,000 subscribers, 200,000 subscribers. That's amazing, Brad. That's incredible little short of the million goal that I set uh, a few months ago, but Hey, you know, it's a process. Manifestation uh, <laughs> and thank you to people like you who helped me reach more people. So that those numbers will keep going up. Uh, you know, yeah. Someone said, you know, how do you come up with all these topics? And I said, by being human. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, now some of them are, are things that, Ooh, I need to work on this. I'll bet other people can. Other ones are, I, I hear people say things. It's like, oh, that would make a great video. Summer requests. I, there are, and, and, and my favorites go back and forth sometimes. I have one on being remarkable mm -hmm. that, uh, that I am particularly fond of, one on being unstoppable. Uh, the ones about really clearing our blocks to being our absolute best, most powerful selves are the ones that uh, that 
I think I, I enjoy the most and the ones that I'll sometimes go back and, and tap through mm -hmm. uh, just to, because nothing's so good, it can't get better. Exactly. So the, uh, the whole idea of, you know, the, so I have what I call the Michelangelo principle. I have Michelangelo's David mm -hmm. all over it on every, everywhere in my office, there's David's. I was going to ask the connection about that. So it's, but I'm glad you brought that up because I noticed on your website too, like you have that. Yeah. Like let's dive into this. What, yeah. what does this mean for you? What does this symbol mean for you? Yeah. So from the first time I ever saw the David when I was much younger, it was my favorite piece of art. It's just remarkable. Uh, but later when I was, when I was doing this work, so Michelangelo said the masterpiece is already there inside the marble. All I have to do is chip away what doesn't belong to reveal the masterpiece. Yes. And to me, that is a perfect metaphor for what this work is because there Absolutely. is the masterpiece inside each of us, but it's covered up by excess marble, guilt, fear, doubt. Limiting beliefs. Yeah, feelings of unworthiness, all of that stuff. And we are chipping away what doesn't belong to reveal the masterpiece. So. While it, while it always loved the David as a piece of art, it was like, oh my God, this is the perfect metaphor for this work. And so, that you, yeah, you can see him behind me there and, and all of that. So, so those, those video, and, and that to me is, is my job. I once gave myself the, uh, my job title is gift unwrapper. <laughs> oh, that's no, but that makes sense. Actually, that's all the, the metaphor makes sense to me. So it's, it's revealing that, that gift and each of us has our gifts and talents to make the world a better place. So my job is to help people clear away what covers up those gifts. And so things like the uh, being unlimited, being unstoppable, being remarkable are, are videos that are just totally about that. You know, you're awesome, share that awesomeness. Let's clear away why you're stopping yourself from doing so. Oh, that's, that's so beautiful that you share that. Thank you so much. That, that uh, really gives context to what I'm talking about in the, tr in terms of what you really, the energy you feel from you and your videos. And I know sometimes you even, you know, I like the fact that you keep them pretty short in the beginning and ends. Usually it's kind of like just a very short, let's get into it right away. And, you know, but I love sometimes in some of them, you, you end with a really beautiful message about, you know, you know, I hope that you guys can, you know, as you say, chip away some of these blocks that are maybe, um, not allowing you to really reach your full potential or, or be giving your full gift. So please, I hope that this at least helps you to chip away at that. So you can be offering this and, and make the world a better place. So I really love that. It's funny because I actually had a conversation the other day with somebody about just what I, what my take on the true state of enlightenment is. And it's actually, it's very uh, in synergy with what you described. It's like, we're already born a masterpiece and you're chipping away kind of these I like to, I like to call it, and I talk about this in my manifestation videos too, but it's like, it's almost like over years as, as you reach adulthood, it's kind of like you have to peel back these onion layers of the things that have been, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily say imposed upon you. Cause I think that we all have a personal choice, but basically things like trauma, things like doubts, worry, fear, lack, all this stuff, these limiting beliefs, these blocks while simultaneous as a soul you're evolving. And I really truly personally believe that the true state of enlightenment is when you get back to your inner child state of being, when you're a child before the world, before your parents, before society kind of imposes all these things upon you. And I'm not no blame or anything i think people, people people do the best that they can given the state they're yes. in at the time but absolutely as, as, you know what i mean but as a child that's our purest our most positive our most natural free mind expansive mind imaginative selves and that's when we a lot of times even do know what our true gifts are when we're that young yes. so it's almost like you have to chip away like you're saying to get back to that inner child masterpiece it's, it's, it's funny that you bring that up because I just literally an hour ago in my mastermind program, I was talking about uh, Picasso said, every child is born an artist. It's just that then they're then taught that they're not an artist. Oh, and, yes. and so it's chipping away that, you know, as Yoda said, you must unlearn what you have learned. Yeah. And 
And, and, and I love what you said about not blaming or imposing because people are, people do the best they can. Absolutely. Exactly. And when I, very few parents ever say, well, I think just for the heck of it, I'm going to teach the ch the artist right out of my child. I'm going to, I'm going to block their creativity. They do it with the best of intentions based on misunderstandings. When a parent exactly. says, don't get your hopes up, which is one of the worst things you can say because the world d depends upon people getting their hopes up. <laughs> but it comes from the pain of disappointment. And so someone who has felt disappointment because they got excited about something and it didn't turn out, it's like, oh, that really hurts. Let's not do that again. Mm -hmm. Oh, and now I have a child and I don't want my child to suffer that disappointment. So, you know, live high on lowered expectations. <laughs> exactly. But I mean, and that's the thing, you know, I think so many of us as adults are having to unlearn these limiting beliefs that our parents, again, it's, it's nothing against parents in particular. Again, right. it could, it could, it doesn't have to necessarily be parents either. I shouldn't just say that, but you know, it could be the school system. It could be society. It could be church, whatever. Like it could be all these things, but absolutely. At the end of the day, I believe that as an adult, it's then your responsibility. You know, that's the difference. I often talk in my videos about having a victim versus victor um, mentality and mindset. And I think your your tapping videos also help us to tune into that victor mentality that we all need to have and say, look, you know, maybe we've done some things or and I will, I'm going to be very vulnerable. I, you know, obviously speaking with you and I'm, I'm so... Um, I'm so stimulated right now by talking to you about all these things, but one of your videos, it's very rare at this point for all the different, you know, techniques I've used over the years or things that I, I teach myself in my coaching or have, have learned that I, I don't find myself too often actually having like a, like I have lots of breakthroughs, but I don't find myself like breaking down into tears so often, but in one of your videos, I was very surprised. I actually started crying and it was like, wow. It was like one of those aha moments where it's like, and I, I often say this, I'm a writer myself with quotes. And I, one thing I like to say is even rocks cry. You know, if you, even if you're the strongest person, all it takes. And that's why I'm such a believer in EFT tapping because I know it takes, it can help you to penetrate your subconscious in a way and really, really dive deep into some unhealed business yeah. that I have not experienced with any other technique. So I can't, I, I'm trying to think, I, I, I'm i gonna have to, I'll put a link to the video that it was. I'm gonna have to look through your videos again because I've, I've watched so many actually of the different <laughs> ones because there's so many good ones. But I think it was, it was maybe something about like, I want to think of the title. It was, it was one of the ones around like, you're, you're good enough to deserve what you want. It was something around that subject of like you, something about being worthy or deserving of the things you want. And I was just going along with the beautiful scripts that you create. And I was tapping them in and I was like, something just, something was being channeled and I unlocked something that made me start crying. So guys, like there's a reason why I have brought on this channel, but <laughs> Maybe for those who are not familiar, Brad, maybe for those Back with who are Brad, not he'll make you cry. <laughs> <laughs> it was, a, it was such, you know what? It was, um, it was so necessary for my soul. Like I knew that I had manifested right. that video from you and that was, and that's what I like to think of for EFT tapping. It's like, it's just another tool in our spiritual toolbox to tap it. Like no pun intended to tap <laughs> into, right? Right. But for those who maybe are watching and are newer to this whole concept of, you know, emotional freedom technique, um, can you maybe talk about, I know you've worked with so many people over the years, you've chatted with so many people, maybe share some of the benefits, but also some of the success stories you've had happen through the people that you've worked with over the years. Because I always find that really inspiring. Yeah. And I've been blessed to work with people on so many different things on, on health issues and being able to clear out physical pain, uh, being able to clear out blocks to making more money. Uh, I had a client who she had a company and every so often she'd call for a session. She'd say, she, she told me once, yeah, my staff says, 
every time you work with Brad, we make more money as a company. So book a session. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the one of my favorite things is just when someone has a, a painful emotional memory that has been there yeah. for some time, and just every so often, you know, or chronically, they think about this, and it and it holds that pain. And sometimes, in a very short amount of time, we can get to a place where they're laughing about it. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, that happened. I had this happen with a client the other day. A, a very scary memory of something that happened as a child. Uh, that she was in tears about and then and then laugh and it's like yeah it happened and, and 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 I love what you had said earlier about the victim and victor because there there are times that we have been that people have been victimized there are times that people have done things to to hurt people so it's not a yeah. matter of you know get out of your victim mentality you control everything it's like no totally understand and, and, and acknowledge there have been times that have been hurt and yeah. as adults, being able to say, okay, but that in that thing's still going on inside my head, and I get to say, I'm I'm not I'm not going to keep reliving that. Absolutely, and, and, and it's scary. It and that's that's why tapping is so helpful because when we try to step out of that, there's a part of us that over years maybe has identified as being a victim. Yeah, and the idea of being something else is scary. If, mm -hmm. if I get up tomorrow morning, if I'm not a victim anymore, I'll get up tomorrow morning, look in the bathroom mirror and I'll call 911 because there's a stranger looking back at me. It's, it's a scary idea of yeah. who I'm going to be. And that has a stress response. So even, even though we would say, I don't want to feel like a victim, if we've been in that mindset for a long time, the idea of no longer feeling like a victim brings up a stress response, says, shut up, go away, stop leave that alone. And the, the tapping yeah. starts to break that down and go, I totally acknowledge my feelings up till now. I totally acknowledge how thinking that way has been an attempt to keep myself safe. Yeah. And the things that people have taught us that keep us in that people teach us from their fear. Our parents have taught the taught us yes. so often from their fear. And so as we allow ourselves to, to clear the stress about, about making changes, uh, we do that. So it's, yeah, there's, there's so many different areas where it's, it's been exciting to see people letting go of who they thought they were and being able to look at situations that at one point would have been like, I can't even imagine that. And then go, well, yeah, of course I can do that. <laughs> that's so profound, but that's the thing. Like, I know, I know you and I share the same love um, in our own ways, from our own experiences and journeys. And I, like, I came out with an EFT tapping, just one video on my channel, because I wanted to share like this powerful work with others, which again, is why I wanted you to wanted to have you on my channel as well, as an expert in this field, because and, and that video got so much positive response, like people, I think it was it was interesting, while you were talking, something just dawned on me, like I because I'm so focused around like the subconscious and the only time I because I I'm all about like where your mind goes energy flows I know you're very much in that similar mindset where it's yeah. like Vic, Victor but I love that you uh bring up that point it's like it's not so much it's not like you're a the one time just to I guess articulate this thought or this this concept the one time I will say for people to that that is absolutely the caveat to to not focusing on only what you want is if you have unhealed finished business from your past. And I think that EFT tapping in particular is what, and I love the metaphor you just used. It was such a brilliant one where it's like, people are so used to having that as their identity for so many years. Yeah. So it's not a matter of all of a sudden going, Oh, I'm not this person anymore. It's not like if you're so used to that, yeah, it's going to be really it, it, potentially, I don't want to intend for that, but it could be potentially <laughs> very scary for you to all of a sudden not, not be able to play this victim character in your life anymore. Right. So I think EFT makes it an easy approach to be able to literally, it's like tapping in a new identity. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's almost like a soothing way that bridge between the old you and who you were really meant to be. Right. Well, you said new identity. No, it's tapping into your true identity and yeah, clearing sorry, away the, the mask. I, I, 
yeah. yeah the new identity that you would take like you you yeah. i guess mentally would picture yourself as but it right. really is getting back to i often call it like going back home like you end up it is it really is it's coming home to yourself i say this with manifesting as well um you know it's so funny like most often and probably even I would say you can relate it exactly to EFT as well. Tapping is that so often we, we search for the, the solution or the cure, or when it comes to manifesting, you're trying to, you, you want to figure out how to, how to attract something externally. And then you realize the real process, the real journey becomes coming home to yourself first and foremost, because only when you shift inside, your world is going to shift without. It's not about that external, right? Right. And whatever the external is that we say that we want, if we don't see ourselves as the sort of person who has that, it's never going to feel safe. Whereas as we see ourselves as, of course, I'm the person who has this, it, it has to show up. <laughs> it's because, you know, it's like the... Um, if somebody wants to get in better shape and says they're going to exercise, but if they see themselves as a couch potato, yeah. then exercise is always going to feel foreign. If you see yourself as an athlete, it's going to feel natural. I, as Dr. Joyce brother said, you'll never outperform uh, who you believe your identity to be. I'm yeah. Not going to quote particularly right there, but uh, you know, we're confined by that but it's a false identity that's that really is coming home to that and on on what you were saying about you know fo positive thinking and focusing on the positive except here and that's one of the things with eft we generally start off by talking about the problem we start off talking, even though i yeah. have this stress even though i've got this problem even though i'm angry at so and so and a lot of people hear that and say whoa what are you doing you can't talk about the negative. You got to talk about the positive. Totally. Say, okay. So if you have a beautiful living room with a beautiful carpet and you also <laughs> have a beautiful dog and your beautiful dog leaves a not so beautiful gift on the carpet, are you going to say, I'm just going to focus on where the carpet is clean. And I'm just going to pretend that that I'm just going to focus. Yeah. It's just my beautiful carpet is clean. Okay. One you're lying to yourself because a big part of your brain is going, there's poop there. Yeah. And two, you're going to step in it and spread it around. So yeah. what do you do? You sit there and you, and it's not a matter of sitting down and just going, Oh, there's dog poop on my carpet and bemoaning and just focusing on it. You say, Oh, there's a mess there. I clean it up and then I don't have to worry about it. And then I can enjoy my, my living room without having to think about that. That's what we're doing with EFT. We're saying, here's what's there because what you resist persists it's exactly. acknowledging what's there and then when you address it you have this level of freedom and it's it's awesome but but it's there's but there's that part of us that says i don't want to look at that because it's painful it's painful to oh, see yeah. dog poop on my carpet that's a stress response that's why eft is so beneficial because it calms that down and says okay i don't have to feel so bad about that it's not what happens to us. It's our thoughts about what happens to us that cause the stress. Yes. So, you know, that's the, the Stoics have been saying that since ancient Rome and, uh, and ancient Greece. And so a allowing ourselves to recognize, okay, if I can calm down the stress response, then I can look at it and see what does it mean about me and why am I making this a bad thing? And why do I feel like I have to avoid it? And then it's like, oh, no, this is something that happened, you know, and now I can address it, clean it up. And then the sky's the limit for what we can create. Absolutely. Wow. So many golden nuggets of wisdom, Brad. I love it. And I feel like so many people can take away so much from what you just said. And it's absolutely true. I mean, at the end of the day, I think the reason why EFT is so effective is because you are I mean, there's the energy factor of, of shifting your energy within because of the different pressure points, but also the fact that you're, I've often thought, and I, I know there's research that proves this too. It's like when we, like, I, I kind of look at the physical body as kind of like a surface level. And then there's like the deeper you go, you know, the spiritual, the emotional, the mental, all of that, because you're dealing with physical right off the bat, it's a very easy way to kind of like start channeling the shifts. 
And because you're also affirming at the same time, that's another element that's really powerful. And like, I teach it in a way where not only are we tapping out things like stress, limiting beliefs, all of those, you know, quote unquote, let's call them sort of negative or unwanted things within, I also like to actually use it to tap in my affirmations, like my things that I want to manifest, which I know you do both as well. So I think it's about time. Like, I guess I, I don't have one in particular that I would love for you to take us through, but I mean, you, you often have talked about ones that are really powerful in terms of helping people maybe release blocks as, as sort of some of the more, more powerful types. So maybe if you could think of one that you want to share with the audience and I'll go through it with you um, as you lead one, two, if someone say, maybe it could be one or the other, like maybe if someone has say an event that's happened to them and they want to try and like to release that thing, or it could just be like a mental block or like a limiting belief that they keep seeing that's showing up in their life as a negative pattern for them yeah. something around that if there's one in particular you'd love to do one i'd be so grateful and i know the audience would too i i would love to yeah so when we the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we are resisting it and we resist it because it doesn't feel safe based on a particular memory or old programming, something telling us why we couldn't or shouldn't have it. And so whatever you say I want, but I don't have, you have brilliantly manifested the absence of it because something inside you says you couldn't or shouldn't have it. Yeah. So let's tap that out, shall we? <laughs> let's do it. Yeah. I'm so excited. So if, if you're new to, to EFT, I'm going to take you through it the way that I do it. The very basic version of EFT is you you take whatever is you're aware of, like this this anger at Bob. I'm so angry at Bob. Okay, so you would just tap each point, talking about this anger at Bob, this anger at Bob, this anger at Bob, and that can be very effective. So, I, I and I I say that so that when we go through it right now, and I'm saying all kinds of different things, and it's a very intuitive process for me. I have no idea what I'm going to say yet. It, I love it. It'll it'll happen uh, in the moment. I don't want anyone to watch this and say, oh, EFT is too complicated. You have to come up with all of these phrases. And, and it's like, no, you don't. You don't. You can tap. The tapping primarily is a stress relief technique. Now, there's all kinds of benefits to it. Uh, it changes gene expression. And I mean, there's all kinds of things that research is now showing that there are benefits to the tapping. But if you thought of it as primarily or if, as, as, even if you thought of it as nothing other than stress relief, that right there would make such a profound difference in your life such that you don't even have to worry about what you're saying. You could just be tapping, maybe just tapping one point and you will mm -hmm. be uh, down-regulating the stress in your body. Absolutely. And in the information yeah. age, we have so many stressful messages. There's always this, this ambient stress that is limiting our well-being at levels that we're not even aware of. We yeah. didn't realize how good we could be feeling because we're so used to this ambient level of stress and just tapping, you know, don't wait till something's bothering you and, and tapping in affirmations is great. Tapping while saying prayers, there's all kinds of ways to things you can be saying while tapping to just let yourself keep leveling up. I completely agree. Like absolutely a hundred percent because I know the powerful effect of doing it first thing in the morning when I'm already feeling great, but it's like I amplify my positivity then. And then at different points in my day or different times in my life, I have used it for, for the other, you know, when I'm feeling a bit stressed or I'm feeling things come up that I, that are not ideal emotions or feelings for me. So like what you're saying is absolutely true. It can like literally amplify the feel good hormones that you have, but it can also mitigate the ones that you don't want to be feeling as well. Right. Absolutely. And what I call uncomfortable emotions. There are no negative emotions because they all serve a purpose. Anger totally. is like a smoke detector. It goes off when it tells you to tell you there's something that needs to be addressed. Same with anger. You don't say, oh yeah, smoke detector. That's a bad device in my house. I wish I didn't have it. <laughs> exactly. But you want to you want to respond to it and say, oh, okay, there's something I need to do, rather than letting it go off and go off and go off and not do anything about it. 
So we that's this is about you know the tapping is not to get rid of the emotions, but to process them so we can see, okay, what can I do such that I can turn the smoke detector off? The alarm will go off after I put out whatever fire is going on. So or change the batteries because sometimes we are angry and it's just a misunderstanding. <laughs> it's like that's oh. it. How many times have we been mad at someone? You said this, and they like check again. I didn't say that. It's like, oh, never mind. <laughs> right? I know. I talk. I I've talked about like reacting versus responding, and yes. I think even if happening, if if especially if you're a highly reactive person, I think EFT tapping can kind of bridge the gap for you. Absolutely, absolutely. We we react rather than respond because it we have buttons that have been pushed Triggers. and and the tapping can allow us to calm down and say, okay, why do I have that button? And why am I reacting this way? Uh, just hearing from a, a, a good friend of mine who posted something on Instagram and, and got a lot of really abusive messages. It's like, yeah, a lot of people are reacting rather than responding. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you know, and that's, and on social media, people, have the feel the freedom to not be diplomatic or compassionate and they're doing the best they can because they're they're reacting because there's something inside of them that there's a fear that got triggered and as we tap we can calm that down and say okay why am i feeling why do i feel so triggered by what this person just said such that i would make a death threat you know that's yeah. one of the things that we see so often in, in the news people making death threats it's like, that's out of place. And what's going on inside of me that I would feel pushed to that point that I would say something that I know is against who I am. Exactly. That's not, that's not the sort of people that we are. We're masterpieces that, uh, that might be really scared based on old stuff. So anyhow, everybody close your eyes, take a deep breath. And just allow yourself to feel centered and grounded. Allow yourself to be as present as possible so as to receive maximum benefit from this process. And I want you to think about something that you would like to manifest. Maybe imagining your ideal life or at least one aspect of your ideal life. It may be some material object, it may be a situation like a job, it may be a certain amount of money. And allow yourself to just follow your breath through your body and say, it's safe for me to have this. It's safe for me to have this. And just let that rattle around inside for a moment. And notice on a scale of zero to 10, how true that feels. Now, for some of you, you might want to say, oh, it's a 10. And I'm going to say, check again. Because <laughs> if it was at a 10, you would have either already manifested it or you'd be obviously on your way such that you wouldn't even be thinking about it. It's like, well, of course, that's already coming. So I don't need to think about it. So the extent to which we resist, the extent to which we don't have what we say we want is the extent to which we're resisting it. So allow yourself to be aware of where that resistance might be. Notice what you feel in your body, what you feel physically and what you feel emotionally and notice where there might be tension, fear, anxiety. Notice what thoughts, beliefs and memories might come up as to why it's okay to think about this. It's okay to put it on your vision board, but be aware of the thoughts, beliefs and memories that might come up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't actually manifest it into your real life. And do this without judgment. You're not bad or stupid for having these thoughts. You, this is just programming you've picked up over the years designed to protect you. So allow yourself to just be aware of those feelings and those thoughts about why it's not safe to have what you want. Take a deep breath, open your eyes. Hmm. And then, uh, so tapping with the uh, fingertips of your index and middle finger and just tap where I tap and uh, repeat back what I say along with Mandy. Even though I'm not allowing myself to have more. 
even though I'm not allowing myself to have more. I choose to really love and accept myself anyway. I choose to love and really accept myself anyway. Even though part of me is afraid of having more. Even though part of me is afraid of having more. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. I choose to love and honor myself anyway. Even though I have this resistance to having more. Even though I have this resistance to having more. And I am so brilliant. And I am so brilliant. I've convinced myself I have no resistance. I've convinced myself I have no resistance. And I have no idea. And I have no idea. Why I'm not manifesting what I say I want. Why I'm not manifesting what I say I want. Because the more confused I seem. Because the more confused I seem. The more I get to stay in my comfort zone. The more I get to stay in my comfort zone. And even though I'm resisting having more. And even though I'm resisting having more. I choose to deeply and completely. I choose to deeply and completely. Love, honor, and accept myself. Love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who might be involved in this. And anyone else who might be involved in this. So tapping right here at the beginning of your eyebrow, all this resistance to having more. All this resistance to having more. Right here in the corner of your eye. All this fear of having more. All this fear of having more. Right under the middle of your eye. All this fear of having what I say I want. All this fear of having what I say I want. Right under your nose. And part of me says, I'm not afraid of that. Part of me says, I'm not afraid of that. Just above your chin. I absolutely want it. I absolutely want it. And right here where your collarbones just about come together. Just tap in that area. I totally intend to manifest it. I totally intend to manifest it. Right under your arm. And I'm doing everything I possibly can do to manifest it. And I'm doing everything I possibly can do to manifest it. And then finally tapping on the top of your head. Except maybe I'm not. <laughs> Except maybe I'm not. Part of me says I really want it. Part of me says I really want it. And I'll tell myself I'm doing all I can to get it. And, I'm, and I tell myself I'm doing all that I can to get it. And I'm allowing myself to be honest with myself now. And I'm allowing myself to be honest with myself now. I may be saying I want to go west. I may be saying I want to go west. And I totally ignore the fact. And I totally ignore the fact. That I regularly take several steps to the east. That I regularly take several steps to the east. But it's not my fault. But it's not my fault. The universe just doesn't want me to go west. The universe just doesn't want me to go west. It just doesn't want me to have what I want. It just doesn't want me to have what I want. And that's how I keep myself brilliantly stuck. And that's how I keep myself brilliantly stuck. I am 100% successful. I'm 100% successful. At, at manifesting what I want. At manifesting what I want. It's just that part of me. It's just that part of me. Really wants what I have right now. <laughs> really wants what I have right now. And nothing more. And nothing more. And I choose to really love and appreciate that part of me. And I choose to really love and appreciate that part of me. That has been convinced that this is what is safest for me. That is convinced that this is what is safest for me. Somewhere along the line. Somewhere along the line. I had some experience. I had some experience. Or I got some programming. Or I got some programming. That convinced me it wasn't safe to have more. That, it, that convinced me that it wasn't safe to have more. And so I brilliantly limit my manifestations. And so I brilliantly limit my manifestations. To those things that I believe are safe. To those things that I believe are safe. And I really love that about myself. And I don't really love that about myself. I, I, I really do love that about, I, I choose to love that about myself. I choose to love that about myself. And I choose to change my mind about these things that I want. <laughs> and I choose to change my mind about these things that I want. I'm clearing the fear of having them. I'm clearing the fear of having them. All this fear about having what I want. All this fear about having what I want. I get excited when I look at my vision board. 
I get so excited when I look at my vision board. And part of me gets terrified. <laughs> and part of me gets terrified. And says, by all means, fantasize about that. By all means, fantasize about that. Because it's totally safe there on your vision board. <laughs> it's totally safe there on your vision board. I can sit there and look at that yacht. I can sit there and look at that yacht. But I can't fall off a picture of a yacht. <laughs> but I can't fall off a picture of a yacht. So it's absolutely safe to get excited about the picture. So it's absolutely safe to get excited about the picture. And part of me says. And part of me says. And we're going to make sure it's just a picture. <laughs> and we're going to make sure it's just a picture. And I choose to love that part of me. And I choose to love that part of me. And I'm clearing the fears. And I'm clearing the fears. That tell me I can't handle the reality. That I can't handle the reality. I can handle it. I can absolutely handle it. And if I fall off the yacht, I can swim. <laughs> and if I fall off the yacht, I can swim. Or I can learn how to swim. <laughs> or I can learn how to swim. I can handle having what I want. I can handle having what I want. I will learn how to handle it. I will learn how to handle it. I can handle positive change. I can handle positive change. A lot of things have happened to me in my lifetime. A lot of things have happened to me in my lifetime. And I have handled all of it. And I've handled all of it. Maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked. Maybe not as gracefully as I always would have liked. But I have handled everything that has happened. But I've handled everything that has happened. The proof being that I'm still here. The proof being that I'm still here. So I'm looking at these reasons. So I'm looking at these reasons. Why I couldn't or shouldn't have what I want to manifest. Why I couldn't or shouldn't have what I want to manifest. Why those things might seem dangerous to me. Why those things might seem dangerous to me. And I'm challenging those fears. And I'm challenging those fears. I'm asking myself why I'm afraid. I'm asking myself why I'm afraid. And I'm allowing myself to process those fears. And I'm allowing myself to process those fears. I'm allowing myself to see. I'm allowing myself to see. That I'm a magnificent child of the universe. That I'm a magnificent child of the universe. Worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. Worthy and deserving of the best that this world has to offer. And I'm allowing myself to let things get better. And I'm allowing myself to, to let things get better. Because I can handle that. Because I can handle that. And I'm setting myself free to move powerfully forward. I'm setting myself free to move powerfully forward. In body, mind, and spirit. In body, mind, and spirit. And take a deep breath. And with your eyes closed, go inside again and think again about what it is that you'd like to manifest and say, it's safe for me to have this. It's safe for me to have this. And let that rattle around inside again. And hopefully that number has come way up. And it may, be, may have just come up a little bit. You know, the fear may have gone down just a little bit, but you may be um, peeling the layers of the onion, like you said. So that often happens in EFT. We're peeling the layers of the onion and we start to see, oh, okay, I'm not, I may not feel it's entirely safe for me yet, but I do now see what might have happened in the past that has convinced me that. And I just need to do some more tapping around that to clear up any misunderstandings there that have been holding me back. Oh, thank you so much, Brad. That was such a beautiful spur of the moment channeling from your healing soul. That's really what it felt like. It's like you're helping each and every person that you flow through this whole process with, as you said, chip away, chip away, chip away. And I, I can certainly attest, like I feel lighter and brighter even through that one session. So, I mean, guys, if you haven't been convinced already, like I feel like I'm glowing even more so than the beginning of this interview. It's such powerful work. If, um, if people are interested in working with you, I know you do offer a few different uh, packages and or different, you know, services or, or products, maybe talk a little bit about like the different ways in which people can actually work with you. 
Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I, I do work with folks one on one. I also have group programs. So I have a group membership called Advance. And that's weekly teleclasses where we, I work with a few people on each call, but everybody who's on the call benefits because they can be aware of what's going on for them. And when you're tapping along and you can do this with any of my videos, you can be, you can have another issue. And even though the words that I'm saying may not resonate perfectly with what's going on for you, just the process of tapping will be clearing out what's going on for you. So it's very profound, even for the folks that I'm not tapping with. And then I also have a mastermind, a very small group mastermind, where I do work with each individual uh, personally in each call. So, yeah. And then on your website, you also, I believe, you have some products that people can... Yeah, different programs where they're, they're longer and go more in depth than, than I can do in a five to seven minute video. Absolutely. And obviously your channel, your channel is just getting bigger and bigger, like... I mean, I know you have millions upon millions of views. When you started it, was it like you just wanted, I'm, I'm really, I'm curious as to what inspired you to choose YouTube of all places. Was it just like you wanted to create videos for your friends and family to start with? I, I had, so I had started putting uh, recorded audios of tapping on my website. And I don't know, I'm not aware of anyone else that had done that at that point, you know. So, and then YouTube came along and it was maybe a year or two old when I, when I found it. And I just had this idea of, hey, you know what? I could make a tapping video that people could start their day with and I'll call it tap of the morning. And uh, that was just all I ever intended to do. I had no plan of having a YouTube channel with multiple videos. I just thought I would like more people to experience the benefits of tapping and maybe putting a video out there on YouTube would be a way that people could, could use that. And it was six months later that I thought, you know, I should have a video to end the day and I'll call it tap of the evening. <laughs> and then I'm done. Now I've got those two videos. That's all people need. And then a couple minutes later, had another idea and then another one. And now there's over a thousand videos. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that that's just so inspiring to see your journey and to also know, like, I mean, I'm such a big proponent of, you know, when you follow your purpose, your purpose, that's really when things like, you know, the fame, the success, the money, like all of that will always just naturally occur when you're doing something that's coming from such a deep place of purpose and something that also allows you to give back to people and honestly Brad like I obviously being a YouTuber myself you know I try my best to look at different channels and like some of the comment sections are things that I always notice and your comment section on your videos like if you guys just want to be uplifted go and read Brad's comment section like the stories the 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 transformations are so incredibly inspiring. Yeah, it's I I'm so blessed to get to do what I do. And it's just, it's so wonderful when I when I get those comments and it's just just validating that okay, I'm on the right path. I mean, I can feel it when I'm doing it as well. It's like this this feels right. This feels right to do. And then you know, it's just nice to get the validation. It's like, yes, this is what I needed to hear. This has been profound for me. Uh, it, it's really funny because every so often I, I am not to that. I'm not evolved so far that I never manifest any, um, any <laughs> pushback. So I'll occasionally get a comment from someone saying, this is stupid. It doesn't work. And I'm like, you're in the comment section on this video. Scroll down. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. There's, there's hundreds of people saying this feels good. So, and I understand the people who do that, who made those comments are the people who are most afraid of it working. Yeah. Those are the people who are like, I want, I have to say this looks stupid because otherwise I might be open to change and I'm scared of that. Yeah. Because somebody who's, who's genuinely, it's like tapping is not what I'm interested in. They're not going to bother to leave a negative comment. I've exactly. had people, I've had people leave similar comments on multiple videos. It's like, if you didn't like it the first time, why, why are you watching more videos? Because they want, because they want it and 
at the same time, they're afraid of it. And if they can find fault and EFT with the tapping makes it give, gives people an easy thing to ridicule. But when you push past that, there are so many people who, and I had some of the most ardent fans of EFT are people who absolutely ridiculed it when they first saw it. Isn't that, isn't that funny how that sometimes is the case? Yeah. It's like, I think, I think just the vibe that I get around situations like that, I think it, I think you're absolutely bang on with um, kind of the intentionality behind where it's coming from, you know, that, that fear of change and, and the people usually with the most resistance, a lot of times will have the most powerful transformations not always but sometimes we'll have those because it's going such a a full spectrum right. of where they they started from to like slowly start the journey and then it's like full throttle to the other end where like they're the biggest believers right right because it's like when we're tapping we're we're most aware of the benefits of tapping when the distress we're experiencing is heavier if I feel, a, if I'm stressed out at an eight and I tap and I get that down to a two or a one or a zero, wow. If I'm already feeling pretty chill and I'm tapping on stress, it's like, okay, I don't really notice it. Uh, it's, it's still being beneficial. It's yeah. like doing sit-ups. You know, you don't do a, a, set, a, a set of sit-ups and go, wow, I suddenly magically have a rock hard six pack. It, it happens gradually. You don't take a, a supplement like a vitamin and necessarily suddenly feel like you're fill, filled with vim and vigor. You know, it's beneficial. So, but when there's something more obvious that you're dealing with, then it's easier to see the, the transformation. So the, the people who are giving that much pushback are the people who are, when they allow themselves to, to notice it, are going to notice the shift more profoundly absolutely so would you have any I, I would say uh we'll we'll start to wind it down here but would you have any words of encouragement or for example like i know we talked a lot about releasing today but for those people who want like i know the tap that you did was so powerful in helping with manifesting do you have like tips that you would give someone who say someone came to you um and said look i know what the, these are my blocks and i want to focus on releasing versus someone who comes to you and says i really want to manifest these particular things in my life would you have kind of the same advice or would it be kind of two sort of different paths you try to take people on it's always individual because i don't have a a set pattern. It's like it, I work with the, the person's energy and what comes up and how I work with one person may be completely different with how I work with someone else. But it is always to some extent about releasing because with the manifestation, it's like, again, the extent to which we don't have what we say we want is the extent to which we're resisting it. So there's something there to be released. Now, there are people who will say, oh, you can't do positive EFT. You can't be tapping on affirmations because it's a cleaning process. You know, so, but even when we're saying affirmations, if you're, if you're cleaning, if you're cleaning up the, the dog poop from your carpet, you can be saying clean carpet, clean carpet, and you're going to be cleaning it up just as effectively as if you say dog poop, dog poop. Now, yeah. if we just say clean carpet, we may not focus on the poop. And so we may be cleaning different places and we want to be focused when, when we're aware of what's going on there, we want to focus primarily on what, what's there. But we may not be, we may not see at first where the poop is. We may just go, something doesn't smell right. So exactly. I can, I'm just gonna be cleaning in general and things will get better and the carpet will get cleaner. Uh, if, we, if we then say, oh, I found what's, what's here. There's dog poop there. Great, then focus the tapping on that. But just the just tapping along and saying prayers or affirmations i was just telling someone earlier someone had said had left me a comment about i'm if i ask for more that means i'm not grateful for what i have and it's like okay that's old programming challenge the heck out of that 
And I said, one of my favorite things to do, and I got this uh, from my friend, Dr. Joe Vitale, who was in The Secret, said, gave me the comment, um, or he learned this from someone else. I thank you for the blessings that I have and thank you for the blessings I am receiving. Mm. So sometimes I'll just tap while repeating that. Thank you for the blessings I have. Thank you for the blessings I'm receiving. I'm receiving. I like that. And so, like and that. I'm just naturally going to clear whatever might be in my energy system that is blocking me from receiving more. I, I have a similar one that I say in terms of um, self-concept where I say, I'm grateful for who I am and I'm grateful for the woman I'm becoming. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And it's the same, it's the same concept. It's like, it doesn't mitigate your thankfulness for the now and the blessings that are in your life or the person you are right now. You don't need to diminish those by still asking for or praying for or trying to manifest more into your life. I'm one of the most grateful people that I know. I literally thank God all the time for things that are already present in my life. But that doesn't mean I don't want to manifest more as well. Such an awesome point, Mandy. We have, so many of us have this belief that we have to be motivated by misery. If I want to get in better shape, I have to beat myself up looking in the mirror and I have to hate my body in order to force me to, to exercise. No, love your body. Love your body exactly as it is right now. We have this fear of if I love my body as it is, I won't bother to exercise. The more you love yourself, the more you're going to want to take better care of yourself. Exactly. You're not going to settle yes. for less than what's possible because you're already loving yourself. If you say, I'm grateful exactly. for my life right now, you're not saying, and that's it and no more. <laughs> you know, it's like, hey, I love this. Thank you so much. More? Absolutely. I'd be happy to have more. I'm loving this. And that that's great. And it doesn't, it doesn't mean you're ungrateful. It, you know, if you go, if you go to the beach and you're looking at the ocean. And you uh, have your hands like this and you see this, this beautiful stretch of ocean right here. You can be absolutely grateful for it. It is not ungrateful to say, I'd like to see the whole ocean. <laughs> exactly. That's it. Oh, Brad, what a beautiful metaphor. Yes. That's a really, that's a wonderful way. Like it's like, it's, it's, and it's funny you said that now that I, I was just about to say this and that makes total sense for this metaphor too. It's like, it's having the abundance mindset. That's a true abundance mindset. It's like, you see what's in front of you and you can still be very grateful for this exact 3D that you see, but the 4D, the 5D, you know, without getting into too much of that right now in this interview, but you know, it's, it's having that expansive mindset to go, even though I, you might love actually what's in front of you right now, but it doesn't mean you can't, you can't ask for more. And if you are wanting to, to achieve more in your life that it takes away or it, 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 minimizes or diminishes what you are experiencing right now. So that's a really beautiful, beautiful way to just look at just, I look at it, like you said, it's like just adding on to what you already have. Yeah. Yeah. And the universe, God source, however you want to see it says, Oh, you like that? <laughs> just you wait. <laughs> There's a lot more where that came from. And the universe is abundant. It's it, so it, it's not about just enough. You know, mm -hmm. it doesn't, when we look up at the stars, the universe doesn't say, just see a few stars. It's like, there's, there's so much more. It, and that's because it wants us to experience that. And I don't even say want, because it's, it's happy to have us experience. There's not a, it's not a should. It's not a matter of you should have more. And uh, you, 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 you know, you're settling and you're wrong for settling. We each find what feels right for us. Not That's everybody is true. meant to have a yacht and a private jet. If you want that, awesome. They're there to be had. You know, give jobs to airplane manufacturers. <laughs> but, uh, but don't feel like, oh, if I don't have a jet, then I'm missing out. We each find our, our own thing. Some people like a very minimal lifestyle. Some people like to have a lot of things. And it's allowing yourself to find what success is for you. What, yes. feels, what feels really good for you. And, uh, and, and I, I love the way you phrase that. The, thank you for the person that I am and for the person that I'm becoming because our identity, who we are is, is what then leads to 
these other things because as I as I become the person who I'm meant to be, who I was born to be, those things that are right for that person, the where I live and who's in my life, what is for my highest good will naturally be drawn to me. Totally it comes from that. And that's and like this is such a beautiful way to sort of close off the interview is just again like EFT tapping I think really allows us to very powerfully come back into ourselves. And we all know like what, you know, as within, so without, right? So the more we chip away, the more we become that masterpiece and things literally will just start to shift in your reality that will be so much more magnetically attracted to you. And also, you know, when, as within, so without, when you shift within, when you become the highest, best version of you, that's just naturally going to reflect in your 3d reality. You know, your masterpiece, the, the world in which you will feel your happiest, it's going to just reflect when you feel your happiest within. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And it's a win-win situation. It is a gift. Your success is a gift to the world. Yes. Benefits and that's, everyone. That's what, that's what I love when you say at the end of your videos, it's like, your real job is just helping people chip away so that they can tap into their truest, highest gifts to then deliver that to the world. So it's not like you're just, it's that ripple effect of you might be helping that one person watching, but if you can help them tap into that thing, that's going to help people in their world. It's just a ripple effect of amazing goodness and positivity for the world. I, I have said to audiences, I, I'm not here for you guys. I'm here for all the other people that are going to benefit from the gifts and talents that you are not yet sharing with them. Wow. That's so beautiful. That's so beautiful. And we can each be that person. We can each be that person in our own worlds. Uh, there's a masterpiece inside all of us. And, uh, uh, you know, who, who couldn't, who wouldn't like to see more masterpiece <laughs> and there, and, you know, be tapping here. There are people who will be threat, feel threatened by that, but saying, I'm going to hide my masterpiece so that you don't feel uncomfortable while you're hiding your masterpiece is a disservice to the world. It's a disservice to them because then you're saying, well, I could be a masterpiece, but you couldn't be. So I'll hold myself back so that you don't feel bad about what's not possible for you. There's a masterpiece inside of them. Challenge them. <laughs> If they get pissed off, fine, because maybe they'll go, I'm tired of being pissed off. Maybe I'll go one, watch one of those tapping videos or one of those manifestation videos or whatever it is, you know, because there's plenty of us out here offering things to help people live a better life. And maybe they'll finally say, okay, I could sit here and be mad at you and, and, and feel jealous of your success, or maybe I'll just get over myself and, and then they'll reveal their masterpiece for the benefit of the world. So totally, please. that's the thing. It's like, it's, it's that common saying of like people getting sick and tired, just being sick and tired of the life that they're not happy with or themselves, you know? Yeah. So Brad, I'm definitely going to include your bio and links underneath the video that y'all are watching right now. Um, if people do want to uh, find you either on social media or, or wh where's the best place to connect with you? So just remember, tap with Brad. That's my website, tapwithbrad.com, my YouTube channel, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. So uh, you can find all kinds of resources through all of that. Thanks. And you even, I saw on your website, I'm not going to say what it is. Let's leave it a surprise, but Brad even offers a free gift. If y'all, I believe, sign up for his emails. So you definitely want to go check that out as well. Yeah. So sign up for my newsletter list. Absolutely. <laughs> pretty... Any last words, Brad? And thank you again so much for sharing your, your wonderful healing and beautiful energy with this audience, but any last words for anybody? Well, first, thank you. I, I appreciate that. Thank you for doing what you do and being who you are and making the difference you make. And thank you for this opportunity to share what I do with, uh, with your audience. The, the key thing is please love yourself. <laughs> Acknowledge that you're worthy and deserving of love. And for whatever comes up as to why you couldn't or shouldn't love yourself, tap that crap out. <laughs> <laughs> because the more you love yourself, the more you're going to acknowledge the gift you are and share that. 
And the easier it is to see how lovable other people are through their fear, and you can help them see it. So it's a total win-win situation. We are all about the love on Pave Your Paradise. Thank you so much. From my heart to you and also to everyone watching, we are sending y'all an abundance of love from our heart space to yours. Thank you all for tuning in. And thank you again, Brad. I hope, as always, as I love to end my episodes, I am wishing y'all a blessed and beautiful day. Thank you.